Hey everybody. So today I want to give you an in-depth by the numbers look at the cost of being a home brewer. And while I'm at it, I'm going to address the elephant in the room and it's not that one. A little backstory about home brewing. A home brewer could be someone who is passionate about their retro system, no matter what that system is, and in their spare time, over a course of weeks, months, or even years, they write a game or other software. And they do it for the passion, or they do it because they want to learn, or they do it because they just want to impress the retro community with their skills, and then when they're done, they give it away for free. I salute those guys. I mean, I did that myself from maybe 83 all the way up until just last year on everything I wrote. I mean, I, out of the thousands of pieces of software that I've written for 30, 40 different systems, I may have sold 10 individual titles and the vast majority of them were contract work where I was developing software for businesses. Only a few of them were games. I would just give away the games. So, that's the one-handed home brewer. And then the other hand of home brewer, you have the ones who create the game, and then they create all the attendant or additional materials that go with it. Cartridges, floppies, cassettes, boxes, manuals, paperwork, everything and sell a complete package trying to replicate how it was 40 years ago when you could walk into the Kmart or whatever store you had and just purchase a game off the shelf. I fall into that category. Up until last year I was not really doing that and I decided you know I really want to try this. I really want to try and see if I could develop games on Obviously not the same level as an Activision or an iMagic or a ColecoVision or Atari back 40 years ago who had millions of dollars and hundreds of people behind them. But on a level that I can, when I get done, I can be proud of what I did. And that's what I do. So that's what a home brewer is. There are home brewers like me out there who are also passionate about their work and they do a lot of work on them. There are home brewers out there who take existing work that other people have done in the past for other systems and make a few changes and release it as new for the system that they're on. That's their way of doing it. That's their way of doing it. I wouldn't do that myself only because I enjoy coding. I'm not coding games just to code games to make money. I'm not taking existing stuff and modifying them a little bit just to say it's mine and make money. I instead like to write my games from scratch, I may take an existing idea, but I won't take existing code, ever. That's just who I am. With the exception of, with Arcadian, I did use existing music. Somebody pushed their horn outside. I did use existing music written by a very well-known and very popular ColecoVision musician. With her permission, she allowed me to use that music. Why did I do that, you say? Because, uh, oh, honestly, I'm not a musician. So, what I want to do is I want to spend a few minutes here and detail the cost of being a home brewer and creating one game. And why am I doing that? Again, the elephant in the room. There is a entity, I should say, who has no name, who has made it their personal ambition, their life goal, to say anything negative they could about me. I don't know if this entity has a man crush on me, but I do think it's unhealthy and they may want to seek therapy. I don't know if this entity wakes up every morning and looks in the mirror, has a little note attached to it, say, do good today, say bad shit about Millie, brush your tooth. I don't know. but. That entity is a well-known entity. Men, 
some people seem to like that entity. Either they are impressed by it or they are in fear of it. But I am neither. So I'm going to rotate the camera down to the desk or the bench. And I'm going to show you bits and pieces and I'm going to give you numbers. And I will put the numbers on the screen too so you can see the numbers so you don't have to rely on me talking. I was kind of shocked when I did up the spreadsheet. And you'll see why. Alright, so what I have here is a finished copy of Arcadian. This is my most recent game. This retails for $50 in my store. $50 on eBay. I've discounted it down to $45 in, on eBay occasionally. But it's $50, just like Crazy Climber Redux and Terminal 2022. $50. Not a bad price considering others are selling their new games that for lack of better words, were written by them for 65 or more. So, 50 bucks. Not a bad price. Especially when you start looking at the numbers. But let's look at the game. I've got this zoomed in a little. If I have it zoomed in too much, I maybe should zoom it out, but we'll see. I'm going to open up the game. First off, let's discuss the game, actually, before I open it. Plastic Protector. You pay extra for these for anybody else, I give them away for free. Why do I include them? Two reasons. One, because I think they look cool, and two, they help keep it safe so it doesn't get crushed. So, plastic protector. Let's open it up. First thing the entity complained about in his <laughs> bear review was I didn't glue these shut. You know why I didn't glue these shut? Because I had a number of okay. Now let's just let's just break this. Let's just remind, remind yourself. This is not selling on a store shelf. This is something I'm shipping to people. If it was on a store shelf, you'd want these glued shut. Why? Because you don't want little kids or people who don't want to pay for stuff ripping things open and taking stuff out. So you glue them shut. You glue your packaging shut. These are going to collectors, and I had collectors complain when I saw when I sent out CCR that I had sealed them shut, and when they opened them, it tore the box art. So. I realized on my second game when I was sending that one out that the, that people were buying this just for the box only or not just for but for the box only so I didn't seal it why didn't I put tabs in here same reason if you pull them out they tear I made it very easy to open it up that is what this plastic box does this plastic box holds it together so you can set it on your shelf you can look at it and it'll be all pretty without damaging it and just to go on the box art this is the reason I went for this box art is I wanted to try a minimal statement on this one. High quality artwork that I paid to have done, minimal statement. Just to give you an example, Caligo purchased a number of mine wholesale and they had their own box art done. Same concept, just more in the line of the old style. It has this on here, which is kind of interesting, but I also came to the conclusion that Again, as these are not sitting on a shelf for people to look at and read and try to figure out the game, we don't need this selling text on the back. Maybe I was wrong, maybe I was right. And this one, if you're wondering why the red lines are here, I'll get to them later. So, back to this. The box isn't sealed. For a reason. You open the box up. And inside the box you have the manual. Nice 12 page full color manual. Nice centerfold of the spaceship. Good description of how the game works. Screenshots and whatnot. You have also a nice printed wall poster, which is a copy of the box art that you can then put in a frame if you wish to put it on your wall in your man cave. Again, this is something that would happen back in the early 80s with games. It doesn't happen anymore, but that's what they do. Then you have the cartridge, Arcadian. These cartridges are donor shells. If you don't know what a donor shell is, a donor shell is a used shell that I take, I gut, I clean, I repurpose. Why do I repurpose donor shells instead of using new shells? I'll give you the reason why. There is one company right now who makes brand new ColecoVision shells. And that one company is either in bed with or afraid of the entity, the elephant in the room. And that company has blocked me from talking to them. 
So, c'est la vie. There's two other companies, or two other people that are looking at making replacement shells, and so am I. Stay tuned. So that's what we have. We have the box here, okay? And again, the bottom is not sealed like the top for a reason. Because if the person wants to take it out of here, I don't want them to damage the box taking it out. So there you go. That's it. Then I applied a little piece of tape on the outside of it to seal it just so that they know they're sealed. So let's break this down. I made up a spreadsheet. Again, I'm going to put the numbers on the side here. I'm using an hourly rate of, let's give you something to look at. I'm using an hourly rate of $10 an hour. That might be high in some states, that might be low in other states, but that definitely is not what you pay someone to program. But I'm going to use an hourly rate of $10 an hour. I'm going to base this on 100 games, because that's what I made. 100 games for Arcadian. I made some more for the wholesale market, but 100 games for Arcadian to retail. Turmoil, I think it's at 150 and CCR is about 225 but 100 games. So the first thing I had to do is, I had to code these games. Each game, I'm just going to use Arcadian as the example, but each one, uh, CCR took longer, Turmoil took a little less, but Arcadian's about in the middle. Arcadian took, I spent about five hours a day for about 50 days. November, December, and January. Time out for two weeks for the holidays and my wife having surgery. So, five hours, 50 days. That's 250 hours. So, Multiply that out times ten dollars an hour. It's twenty-five hundred dollars divided by hundred games. That's twenty-five dollars per game in labor, right there. On a fifty-dollar game, half of it's gone in labor immediately. Now we have the PCB in all its intended pieces. PCB I get made and shipped to me. PCB seventy-five cents a piece. EEPROM dollar seventy-five. 74 LS 21s and capacitor that goes on there, yeah, 60 cents. Don't worry about the cost of the EEPROM programmer. These right here, as I can spread that cost out, but this was 75 bucks upfront cost for that. Time to solder, five minutes. Time to test to make sure all the soldering worked, five minutes. Label cost. Right here, 54 cents a piece, $54.13 per 100. Time to assemble, 10 minutes. Total cost for a finished cartridge built one of these, just in case we've forgotten what it was, one of those is $6.97. That's physical cost to build that. But how do we get there? Well, first off, we have to start out with something. We have to start out with the donor cartridge. The donor cartridge is like this. I buy these in bulk when I can, if not as cheap as possible. I get them on anywhere from $3 to $5 a piece. So on average, I'm paying $4 a cartridge for one of these old copies of Smurf, maybe Donkey Kong, maybe Zaxxon. And fear not, the rare ones I'm putting back out into the community. I have a thing where I tell people, hey, I got these ones right here. If you have duplicates of Smurf, Donkey Kong, or whatever you want to trade me two for one, you pay shipping, done. I mean, I've done that. I've taken cartridges that are worth 25 bucks and I traded them for two Donkey Kongs. Why? Because I'm not an asshole. So, $4 for one of these. Time to disassemble at 10 minutes. 566 total to completely disassemble this. Okay? Oh, and the 10 minutes is also to clean it. Once we disassemble it, I have to rip the labels off, I have to scrub it down, then I have to soak it in rubbing alcohol. 91% rubbing alcohol. For about a day to get the vast majority of the label to come off. And heaven friggin' forbid if somebody decided that their label was coming off and they used crazy glue to stick it on it. Trying to salvage them is a bitch. But I get it down to here and then I take and I scrub every cartridge down. Occasionally, you end up with a little bit of debris that just will not come out or that disappears, see then you got the little shiny right here? That disappears when cleaning, but as it sits and dries, the label color comes back. I have yet to figure out how to do get rid of that. But we are looking at 566 to disassemble, clean a cartridge to get it to this point. Not counting 
reassembling it. Oh, not even to this point, because again, this one still has to be cleaned. This one just came out of the rubbing alcohol. So we got there. Then what else do we have? Well, we have the manual. This beautiful 12-page manual right here. This cost me $1.61 a piece. $161.13 for 100 of them. $1.61 a piece. It took me five minutes to cut, fold, staple every one of them. So you're looking at $2.44 for the manual. $2.44 for the manual. The little wall poster here, I didn't even include in the cost here. The wall posters cost me $0.75 cents a piece. I didn't even include that in my spreadsheet cost. Now, let's get to the box. As we have this box here, I'm going to use turmoil as an example because it's the same thing. This right here, this sheet of very strong paper printed is a dollar eighty-four piece, one hundred eighty-three dollars ninety-six cents for a hundred of them delivered to me. It takes me ten minutes to run them through my scoring machine, which I'm going to show you the scoring machine. This big old beast that I can't even get in the camera is a scoring machine. What does it do? You say? It scores papers, and it cost me one hundred ninety dollars. I have to take one of these and run it through that system four times, each time adjusting the scoring to a different score line, and then cutting. And then when done, we cut the flaps. Then we fold, we glue, we assemble. So, time to score, cut, and fold one box averages out to 10 minutes. This protective sleeve right here, I buy them in quantities of either 100 or 200, depending on what I need, but on average they're $89 for 100, so that's 89 cents. To assemble my folded box into one, they fold these up, put everything in there, put all the goodies inside of it. And be completely done, five minutes or less. So the cost of assembling a box, materials, time, everything, $5.22. And then we have one other cost, the shipping materials. I don't use free boxes. I don't use recycled boxes. I purchased boxes special just from these from Uline. Just so I have a specific box to ship with, as people have probably seen. They're eighty-nine dollars and sixty-five cents for a hundred, so ninety cents. And then just to reiterate the time spent on this, just because I do have this noted here. To write this code here, the reason why it took five hours a day, 50 days, there's over 12,000 lines of assembly code in there. If you take out the parts that I had to discard because we decided to change things or when debugging we decided we had to rewrite it, you're probably looking at 16 to 18,000 lines of code. So just so you know, a lot of code in there. So what's the total cost on a completed Arcadian? complete cartridge, manuals, wall poster, box, protective sleeve, shipping materials. Remember I saw, said I sell it for 50 45 on eBay. My completed cost is $46.19. Nice to know, see? That was a good that was a good little wow. $46.19 is my complete cost. If I'm making a profit on each game, I'm making $4.81 profit. If, since I'm using PayPal as my payment gateway and they keep 3%, what's that work out to? They're keeping like a buck fifty. So probably my profit's probably even less. Then shipping, I don't make any money on the shipping. Um, the entity who, in his non-review, complained about the cost being $59 with shipping. Um, I guess the entity doesn't know how to look because he could have chose priority shipping or he could have chose medium mail. Medium mail is only $3.19 and I guess he doesn't know how to look. And so there's that. So, I might make two bucks on a game. Two bucks. And then, I showed you... These right here. This is the version that I made for Coleco. 
they ordered 45 copies wholesale. When their designer sent me these, and as part of the wholesale deal is, I created special box art. Well, I created special boxes for them. They supplied the box art. Their designer sent it to me. It wasn't noticed because it's a very high resolution PDF file. And we didn't zoom in and we didn't notice until it got printed and came back that they left the score marks on it. So I had to absorb the $102 cost for them and they paid to have them reprinted again, but the first one I absorbed. Then if you have kept up with my post, you'll know that in January, beginning of January, I think maybe towards the end of December, any, anyway, whoever it was, when I received the printed materials back for Acadium, I realized, oops, I misspelled the name on the boxes, on the covers, on the wall posters. That was $430 that I had to reorder all these things. So let's add that in, it's another 500 bucks now. I mean, what it was it? I, odds are I haven't made a friggin' penny on these games this time. Does that mean anything to me? No, it doesn't. I'll keep doing it. Why? Because I believe in what I'm doing. That is why, no matter what the entity says, and his, as I said, his unhealthy man crush on me, where he feels that every day he needs to say something bad about me because, I don't know, is, that what it takes to make him feel better about his life? I don't know. I do know that from everything you can read on Google, and I won't tell you how to find it, but it's obvious. Certain somebody does have issues, and he's been doing this for over a decade. So, now you know the cost of being a home brewer. As I said in one of my videos, it's not all wine and women. Sometimes the friggin' emotional bullshit you go through makes it not even worth it. I mean, seriously, I mean, last weekend before I, I mean, I had to sit there and just swallow it. But I was, I reached out to a couple people. I, I was just ready to just walk away. It's just not worth it. But I've decided this is something I want to do, I'm passionate about. It is something that I am going to go against all odds and make it, if not pay for itself, which it does at this point, put a few dollars in my pocket, in my daughter's pocket, in my wife's pocket. And if the entity wants to begrudge me the fact that I make a profit, well, screw him. This is America. That's what we do for a living. We, it's called making a profit. So there you go. That's what it takes to be a home brewer. And you know, I haven't even addressed the other things I do. Besides what I'm making for the ClecoVision, I'm working on gains for the Mattel Aquarius. Yeah, unknown system, totally unknown. But just just so you know how the cost of being a home brewer. Over 500, almost $500 for 100 cartridges. For the Aquarius. And the nice thing is, I could buy these new. I don't have to salvage existing cartridges. So, cost of being a home brewer. The glamorous life. Everything's great. Have a great day.